Me acuerdo, ¿no? Chanica, ¿no? ¿no? Well, good evening. Sharika, are you ready? Are we all ready? Yes, yes. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Shanika. Thank you for joining us today to celebrate the life of Lucky Sen and uh, We anticipate this event lasting around an hour and a half and request that uh, you all keep your mics on mute until it's your turn to speak. Uh, if you know anyone who has trouble logging into the Zoom event, uh, please note that this, will, this is being live streamed on um, our official Jeffrey Bava Trust Facebook and YouTube channels. We welcome those in the audience who would like to say a few words to do so in around 30 minutes. Uh, in case we don't manage to get to you due to time constraints, uh, please feel free to drop your messages into the chat. I now invite Chana Daswatha, chairperson of the Jeffrey Baba Trust to open the event. Thank you. Well, good evening and welcome everyone to this evening of celebrating the life of a great Sri Lankan. Of course, if Lucky was around, he would have giggled uh, with a lot of mirth about what we are just about to do, which is to kind of talk about him which is one of the things that he really thought was very funny. In fact, one of the last emails I got, got from him was about how, how funny he thought about something that I had uh, uh, spoken to him about his own life. Many of us who knew Lucky Senanaika will of course miss him dearly, as will the country miss one of its great sons. In this time of pandemic, where many of us have not been able to pay a personal tribute, it was thought of tune by the Jeffrey Bava Trust to make this virtual tribute. So thank you very much for joining us. I know it's limited to uh, the number that Zoom allows. Uh, for those who, of course, who, who can't join, uh, we are live streaming, as, as um, Shanika said, uh, on Facebook and, uh, and, and YouTube. 
Today, as we gather to celebrate the life of, of what I call a complete man. For those of us who are privileged to have met Lucky, something that we will always remember is the sparkle in his eye. And I always think that sparkle was that part which could be observed from the outside of a fully enlightened inside. Looking at the way Lucky lived his life, it was clear that he was not one for compromises, not uncompromising in a sort of militant way, but in a way that he had worked out on his own terms. Perhaps this is what led him to live the full life of an artist. As an artist, he simply engaged with the world around him, its natural beauty, legends, history, and interpreted it in his own singular way. He wasn't making work to please anybody else but himself. And that he pleased so many of us was of course a measure of his immense ability to move the human heart through his work to look at our world differently. Not one to be consciously a part of any movement, he was indeed the artist laureate of his time. Not simply in the variety of important state commissions he was involved in from the beautiful currency notes he designed in 1979, depicting the flora and fauna of our island, to the magnificent chandelier inspired by the Coco de Mar palm that hangs in the Chamber of Parliament, but through some of his simplest works. One work he made a few years after the great tragedy of 1983 and displayed recently at an exhibition at the Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art in Colombo was a simple painting that pointed out to us that nowhere was now here. Lucky's, may I say, independent view of the world that was unfolding around him reminded us that what we may have been missing most significantly, its beauty, which he worked on through his incredible wide variety of work. His landscapes reminded us of the passing of time, his drawings of the other living creatures that shared this world with us of their vulnerability. His ability to make his work undoubtedly came from his great generosity. His life was one which was open for engagement with anyone who cared to make an effort. Many other times he has simply welcomed with open arms, complete strangers to the wonders of that most paradisical of places, the Abubula. If only the effort was made to find and get there. In this too was a lesson, nothing comes without effort. At the Abubula was on display, not simply Lucky the artist, but dare I say Lucky, the complete work of art. Being invited to be there and engage with a place in his company was indeed to be part of a work of performance art. What was so authentic about it was that it was so unselfconscious on his part, and so even for the person participating in it until they leave the place. Away from the Abubula, one can only long to be back and wonder why one's life cannot be that way. Dare I say, for those of us who are privileged to have that experience, it may have been Lucky's greatest contribution to our lives. A life lived to a full, where the dictum less is more was truly present. But then again, in his modesty, wisdom, and superlative wit, Lucky would have the last word on that count too. And I quote, less is more or less more, and a little may go a lot of a long way, or so they say. But let us leave those abstruse philosophies to those who, are, who we humbly suppose no more or less more than the most of the rest of us. That was a quote of a poem Lucky wrote in 1984. He was, he's somebody that all of us here will, will miss dearly. But of course, his wish, as Mintaka said a few minutes ago, was that we get on with our lives as we always have. Welcome to this evening and let's see, and, and let's celebrate this wonderful life that we've seen pass. Thank you, Chana. I, uh, Dominic Sansoni um, apologizes for some technical issues. Um, so instead we will move on to um, Geeta now. Uh, Geeta Karandavala from Barbarian Resorts. I invite you to say some say a few words. Thank you, everyone. I had known Lucky over a long period of time, but my engagement with Lucky and the Abubula was of more recent origin. 
maybe 2010, he came to Barbarine Reef to meet my brother Manik to help him design some water features. And over the course of the day, he suddenly asked us, Manik, why don't you buy the abubula? And Manik being what he is said, Lucky, why are you asking us to buy the abubula? Is it a land that you cannot sell? And Lucky said, I want to make some money during my life to give some of the people I have worked with, but I also want to live in the abubula and do my art and sculpture and make music. So why don't you come and see me? I had not been to the Abubula. And so the next day or two days later, Manik and I went to the Abubula. And I sat on the terrace and Lucky asked me, would you like to listen to some music? And I said, yes. And he asked me, what music would you like to listen to? And I said, maybe Bach. And in a few moments, that forest was filled with music. And I sat entranced. And so we decided to buy the Abubula. And Lucky made an arrangement with us so he could live there as long as he liked, as long as he lived. And he told us he will make some villas for the Barbarian guests. And he said, I will make the villas. I will design the villas. I will execute the villas. And you need to find me 2,500 railway sleepers. So Manik found the 2,500 railway sleepers. And over the course of the next two years, I had the privilege of working around this Bohemian artist, getting to know him more intimately and working with my conservative brother and help Lucky create some of the most exquisite spaces that I have ever come across. Old railway sleepers merged with new wood, wall to ceiling art, ceiling to floor art, digital art. Lucky designed everything for it, the chairs, the tables, and told us exactly where to put, exactly what colors, what should the, should the fabrics be. And then he designed this digital art. And one day I told Lucky, Lucky, you know, I'd rather that this digital art that you made for us remains within the villas rather than everyone have access to it. And Lucky told me, my dear, when Michelangelo painted the Sistine Chapel, did he say that nobody should have copied this? And Lucky brought me up to the ways of the forest. When I told him that we need someone to sweep the leaves off the paths, he told me, my dear, this is a forest, not a garden. And we had engineers working with Lucky. And one of them came to my brother and said, you know, so it's very difficult to work with Lucky because he wants to change the, um, change the shape of the roof. And when we asked him, he said, if you make the roof lower, then when the leaves fall on the roof, they will drop on the ground and you don't need to clean the roof. And my brother told him, Kitsiri, I think you are not creative enough to work with Mr. Lucky. I'll send someone else. And if anybody grumbled to him that there was a practical problem, for example, Rajiva, who was coordinating for Lucky, he would say, you know, my dear, these nephews of mine can't understand a brilliant idea. And so when the, when the lodge was finished, when we had our villas, our guests, he had an arrangement to receive them. And they were entranced by this artist living in this forest abode, but so erudite, so in touch with the world and technology and could speak about not only art or music, but politics or history or philosophy, whether it was Germany or whether it was yeah. Finland. And I have listened to him and been amazed that he was able to remember the names, the details. 
And so we had over 10 years of happy living, harmonious living. And some of our guests also organized in Japan, for example, Toshia is organized an exhibition of Lucky and his book was just out before, after the COVID and he'll probably have it next year. But what I want to tell you is that in the later part, latter years, Lucky discussed with me how the Abugula can continue to be an inspiration for future artists and architects so that everyone can enjoy it. And I will discuss with Mintaka how this can be done in a practical way. And dearest Mintaka, I want to let you know that Lucky loved you and your son dearly. And what I loved and treasured most about Lucky is the, his generosity, his kindness, his unjudgmental way, and his being a good human being. And I want you to know, Mintaka, that you will always have a home at the Abubula with us. Thank you. Thank you, Geeta. Thank you. Thank you so much, Geeta. That was really sweet, very kind. All Thank right. you. <laughs> Uh, we'll now be playing a musical tribute from the soul. Uh, before I start, they had a message that they wanted me to read out. Uh, we remember having conversations with Lucky about everything under the sun and moon. What fascinating, what a fascinating human he is, to say the least. Naturally drifted towards the heavy topics of death and suicide. He said the way he sees it, he's an old man now and everything hurts and creaks. And he looks forward to death as the next adventure. He said he has done pretty much all he has to do. Now he is excited to see what the next steps hold. We give our condolences to the family and know that whatever Lucky is up to now, it's probably a fantastic adventure. See you on the other side, Lucky, with love from the soul. Pilini, will you be playing the video? Um, yes, I'm sorry that. Every ship in the dockyard will rust away. Every face in the mirror surely shall wrinkle us one day. No 
Thank you so much to the soul. I now invite Shehan Obeseker to say a few words. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Shahan, Shahan Obeseker. I do all sorts of things, but for now, I'm mostly a photographer. But to, uh, I only known lucky for the last three years of my life. Uh, sometimes that feels like a very long time, uh, but uh, sometimes it's just really not, it feels like it's not really enough. Uh, but that's how, like, that's how it was with him. If, if, you, if you met him once and if you had a conversation with him, it would feel like you've known him forever. Um, yeah. it's, it's just, it's how, how present he was always there. He was, he was always there when you speak to him. He was always very present. And that would encapsulate like it would suck you in. Uh, honestly, I can't recall the first time I met him. Probably because I was, I was too, uh, too much for me to absorb. Especially because I went to his house at Dear Bubla, for the, seeing it for the first time. I, I, and seeing it for the first time, flung my brain wide open, uh, like so many doors in my brain open because I, I always dreamt of living and working on the mountain tops or in the forest or, or by a lake or the treetop. Um, and uh, then you meet a seemingly uh, a sane 80 year old who built a sanctuary for himself with his bunch of his friends. And then you think, okay, this is possible. And you can do that. Uh, and while I was there, I've asked him various questions about various things. We watched a lot of films together. We lost, watched a lot of, uh, we listened to so much music. And uh, I kept asking questions about, questions about things that was around him and he has created, because I didn't know him as a famous artist. I just got to know him then. I didn't know of his work then. So I got to know the man as he is without any, any any putting him, him on a pedestal of sorts because he would probably, I mean, now thinking, but now knowing him, he probably would have hated that. Um, that's how he was. Uh, he, every time I would ask him about something, he would launch into a passionate story about how this idea came to be and every single detail of it. And always, it would always lead on to a very simple thought and from very complicated things were born out of very simple things. And he would always, his persistence like was infectious, like for looking at very complicated things in a very simple way. Uh, and it, 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 it made me feel like everything and anything was uh, in life as possible. Uh, uh, as an artist, as a photographer, uh, things I want to do, things I want to create, it just seemed like I could do anything. It was easy to talk to him. We shared a lot of things in common, like we had endless hours of talking about, sorry, I can't. <laughs> uh, endless hours of talking about ferns, moss, and like, you know, trees. We could go on for like hours. Uh, it was like talking to a, talking to a, um, a group, your best friend. You know, you just met him or you only know him for like a few months, but the limits of a conversation was the limit you would set for your best friend. <laughs> I had like a few pictures to share, um, but I don't, I was very crudely done, so I don't think I will love share it like that, but I show one picture before I go, um, because of this lot of many ways he has inspired me. And uh, because we, uh, Mintak and I spoke earlier and uh, she's, uh, she, and we were talking about how he would still stay in our lives long after he's gone. Uh, let me share this one picture with you guys of this. This is him working, but this one picture of one day when I was there in the night, uh, fish owl came and perched on top of his uh, horse sculpture. And then that, that, was, that, that was lucky. And now, now it's lucky for me because 
he'll always be there in my brain, perched up at the very top, you know, of a, um, a great human being. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shehan. That that's really lovely. Tati loved that Vishal. He that fellow came there all the time, and he would tell me, "Oh, he's back visiting." So thank you for sharing that picture. You know, you'll have to send me that, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you, you again. so much, Shehan. I now invite Chandra Aluvihara from the Aluvihara Heritage Center to say a few words. Samadina to Musub Sandevak, Kalminama Binta Kaitu Pauli Samatama, Mr. Saint and I Gaba Vigana, Upper Aluvihari Heritage Center, Ayatini, Samar Venuing, Mame Sokaya, Prakasha Kurano, Mr. Saint and I Kapta Sahin, Archipala, Eva Game of Ayatani, Udaka Kurapu, Hundavat, Hundam Hatmik, Danatona Tapi. Dilatin drawing Karanova, Eva Tama Kalat, Makavidia, Pedicilla, Dilatino, then at our key paper, which monkey than had it out of the Panaha Kutter, Kalyak, Atharavagam, Ashi Kerlatino, Itama Hunta Gunavat, Mahatmik Baba, Mutter, Bayanatuki and Puluam, a Pitunga Guru Harukam Dilatino, Diagana, Chasing Karana Hetty, most Karandina Hetty, then a cut the Piaetani, Emma drawing Karaginiano, Emma Harimakalat Mukadeval, in Harimakanagat, why a Peter in Eveni Kenik, Nativi again. A Piaetani Mulina Patanga, Tape, Madam Hissin, a silver picker, some band the beaming, a pit, good a car shaker, a good a Kaluhar in Amatila Hitia. Bintaka Punchikale Pawa, Bitik, Avila Luhari, Madam Mika Hitia. Etakota Matmatakai, Mr. Sena, and I could die well at Hitang Epic when I will Chandra Miakaranda, Mihima, Mihimakarla Karande, Etakota Mihimai part, Harian Nikilamaduda, over this deal at the end. King in a TV Mopita Luku, so Kayak is okay, Pauli Hammer with Dena Venima Mama. Thank you. Ane Miss Chandra, Boho Miss Tuti, Oage, Vachana Walter, Oglang among Audu, Magi Muluji, Pite, Madana, Aya, Ekin Doglang, Hammerville, Mata Hunding, Me Aluhari, and Okota Hammerville, Abmati, Kondat Asrikara, Mandana, Maupudikali, Balagata. Over time, I matter Tati Duna Locuma Deval, Mukadea Hamuilim, Benakat Ben Ayatikamata Astrik Randa, Vilavuduna, Ek Locuma Locuma de Akit in Bohomi Stuti, Kaudakat, Mama Amatakuin, and Count in Enna with Barata, Mama Aluhar in the Kamati, Mukada Atama, Mata Loku, Ekenic Magi Givitene, May Tati. Mala Andinoa, Atama, Mata, may perfume, Hamavele, may a hundred, may pussing hit a pekeneke, e deva, Tama, Mata, Kawadaka, Mata, Kwene, it in Bohomi Stuti. Stuti in Daka. Thank you, Chandra. I now invite Clara Kraft, architect, filmmaker, and educator, to share her tribute. Hello, good evening, everybody. So, so lovely to be part of this amazing event. I, I am, as, as, as was introduced, I'm an architect and a filmmaker and I teach at the Royal College of Art in London. And I had the privilege of meeting Lackey uh, as part of a documentary that I was shooting in Sri Lanka about the work of Geoffrey Bauer. And I will shortly share my screen with a little piece I put together from our visit um, in October 2019. Um, I went to visit Lackey particularly because I wanted to talk to him about his collaboration with, with Bawa and most particularly about the staircase that he made at the Lighthouse Hotel in Gao. And um, 
Only yesterday I found out that it's very likely that the king that sits at the top of the staircase playing his flute is possibly a self-portrait. And when I found this out, I, it didn't surprise me because when we arrived to, to meet him, it felt a bit like meeting a king of some kind and we were in his court and he wasn't literally playing the flute, but there was flute music coming out of the trees. Um, anyway, I want to say thank you so much for the Jeffrey Bauer Trust for putting this together and also for facilitating so much of uh, the film, which you will be seeing shortly. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen now. Um, there will also be a link in the chat for those of you who would like to see the extract independently on the website, on, on, on the web, if you don't have very good uh, internet. I had left Jeffrey by then and was doing other things, but he was doing this. It's a huge 44 diameter dome which has a staircase going up two floors. Now, I had given him a drawing in the 60s of the Portuguese invading Sri Lanka. It was called the, uh, the, uh, the Portuguese arrived under a cloud. I didn't know what to do. I just started drawing a cloud, a nice sheet of paper, and I, I, I'm wondering what to do. So I started, I just started drawing a cloud. Then the cloud, then I would do the sea. Then I thought I'd draw a few ships. And it gradually came one by one till it was a huge battle of the Portuguese coming up the hill. And all the Sri Lankan natives from high up, like Sikiri on a rock, coming down the hill. So it was a major battle scene. Now he wanted me to draw that on the wall. The hotel was going to be open in six months time. And that is impossible for me to do this huge amount of drawing. So I said, why not instead? We make it as a sculpture, as a balustrade really. So James said, brilliant idea. And I started making it. Now, he didn't visit me where I was doing somewhere else, so he didn't know what I was doing. He had thought that there's a staircase, and I'm doing a sculpture like that going along the top of the staircase. It turned out that I was making larger than life-size figures. So when he first saw it, he was really stunned, because he was expecting a small thing. <laughs> you have been there. I to go. There is a wonderful piece of architecture. Can you hear that? The, the serpent eagles going on up there. Sound. That, that's a migrant bird that has just arrived. Like a tourist. <laughs> just right
Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Clara. Um, I now invite Lahiru Patmalal to take the floor. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for having me. Um, so essentially, uh, it, it's, it's kind of daunting actually to speak uh, um, after so many speakers uh, giving um, such great insights actually to Know how lucky lived and um, and you know the impact he created for everybody around him. Um, and I've been reflecting a little bit um, what to say in the in the few minutes I will have um, in, in regards to lucky in terms of what is pertinent to all of us and pertinent to me. Uh, so essentially, in terms of how I got to know lucky, it's uh, it's it's a bit like Shahan. It, it was quite by chance. I can't say I knew the man very well. I actually uh, bought a painting from Dominic Sansoni, my, myself and a friend and I. And, you know, we took on upon ourselves to kind of figure out who Lucky Senana is. And there was a great deal of actually trepidation because we knew he was a, he was a larger than life figure. So when we, <clears throat> when we visited him, I was actually quite afraid because, you know, I, we've met artists or personalities uh, in our time. And uh, I mean, truth be told, when you accomplish something in life and you're that old, usually you're quite uh, not forgiving about people or you know, you're, you're highly opinionated uh, about, about everything. But you know, Lucky was uh, none of that. He uh, essentially welcomed us as, you know, as he'd known us for a long time. Um, you know, I was really happy to make some gin and tonics with him. And uh, subsequently, I can even remember him uh, you know, uh, whistling. And I was thinking, wow, what, is, what, a, what a strange guy whistling at everything but at that time I thought you know he's an artist you know, he can be a little bit strange you know <laughs> that's that's perfectly fine uh, and you know through the years I got to know I suppose Lucky very very um, intimately I used to meet him you know, half a dozen times a year the the thing which I feel Lucky left me most with and the people who I went to visit him with the first time who inspired also became very close friends with him, uh, was the fact that he imparted on all of us uh, to see a wonder in pretty much everything around us. Uh, and even if you think about the Abubula, um, uh, what is perhaps his greatest creation is, is this, uh, is this um, garden which is inward look, right? Like you don't actually have vantage points out of the Abubula. It's, it's things which come into the Abubula which you enjoy. So in, in times of COVID, in times of uh, periods where we are essentially locked away in our house or in, in small areas than we used to, there is this tendency, especially right now, I feel, to you know, lose, a little bit of, um, uh, lose a little bit of hope. And I think Lucky essentially uh, encapsulated, at least to me, everything to do with hope. Um, in the way he saw things. And if you spend enough time with him, um, I mean, forgetting about the art, it's just the moments which he left with you. Uh, and it's really hard to kind of explain that without, without knowing somebody like that. I, have, I, for one, have not met anybody like that. He made you almost always make, you know, feel so much better about existence, about life. Um, than essentially, you know, where, where you came in with. So you almost left your load with Lucky and then you felt so much, uh, so much lighter going back. So I, I feel uh, those are my, those are my uh, few words. And, you know, if, if somebody doesn't uh, know Lucky or didn't have the privilege to get to know Lucky, uh, you know, make an effort to get to know him, uh, you know, read, and there's so much of a digital material which is out there. Uh, and I think our lives will be so much richer. Uh, for it. Um, I thank everybody for uh, giving me the time to express myself uh, a little. 
uh, and hope to be uh, a part of Lucky's life even though it's past. Um, thank you. Lairu, thank you so much. Um, I, you know, I, there are a lot of people on this call that I don't know, um, but I have, Tati has spoken about you and, and the things that, you know, you guys um, talked about. And every time he had a visitor to the Abubula, he always would email me and tell me, you know, oh, so and so came to visit. So all of those moments really meant a lot to him as much as you feel it meant to you it meant a great deal to him as well. So thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Kyle. It's very kind. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Lahiru. I now call upon Rajiv Vijay Singh to say a few words. Thanks very much. And I'm sorry I got a bit late. To, well, I didn't get late to come in, but the place was so full that I couldn't get in for some time, which is a very understandable, given what a wonderful person Lucky was. Um, I will just say a few words about a very brief acquaintance with him, I think. I uh, only knew him really through Ina, and I still have the most wonderful memories of Lucky, uh, initially at Anurkusum's wedding, uh, throughout which he played a flute. You know, he turned up bare-bodied as he always does, and just strolled through that fantastic setting where there were hundreds of people, uh, that's when I first met Channa, who decorated one of the sheds along with Angela and Ismuth and so on, did another. And Lucky, who was uh, probably the closest to Ina of all her architect friends because they'd worked together in the um, uh, uh, Ina Silver Fabrics, uh, was so much at home there. And he was this presence, this absolute presence. You know, he had a magnificent sort of air about him. Uh, looking across between a king and uh, an artist, both of which he was. And it was lovely to see him. And then I met him really through uh, Ina over the years. They had a lovely friendship and he used to drop in and see her uh, occasionally. And she always loved seeing him. And you could see that sense of intimacy, uh, which of course she had with so many artists but uh, he was obviously very, very special indeed. Um, and then I really got to know him over uh, two things. One was when I asked for a contribution to the book I brought out for Ina uh, when she was 80, which was a tribute to her from various people. And uh, I remember two wonderful people Lucky and Nihal Fernandez said, we can't write, but we'll give you something even better than an article. And I'm going to end with reading what Lucky did provide to me. But before that, I should just mention, when I really met him on his own without Ina, when a few years ago, I did a series of interviews with a host of people. This was also inspired by Ina because she kept telling me, darling, we have no records in this country. There aren't enough records. No one knows what's happened in the past. Everyone starts to build anew. And uh, thank heavens that while politically we have no records and we keep trying to reinvent wheels, artists among them have begun to realize this. And I have to say, I'm so grateful to Channa and Amila because at Ina's, they are now recording all her designs, which she kept, but in a wonderfully chaotic fashion. Those brilliant things that she and Lucky and Anil Garmini produced in the 60s. But then I started recording interviews with people. And while Ina refused, it's one of my great regrets, um, a lot of wonderful people, Gina Rasanagam, Anne Ram Singha, uh, Ismat Rahim, lately Ayrangani Sarah Singha, I'm still hoping to catch Channa sometime, uh, Sumitra Piris. And uh, Lucky agreed, and I went to their booth for the first time. It was just fantastic. You know, go in and you go through these underground and above ground and there's water and there's carvings and there's music. And there's this character sitting there on that ledge. Um, wonderful presence. And he just bubbled and bubbled and bubbled. I think he bubbled for about two hours and Daniel, this wonderful filmmaker who made the series, you know, had to 
control the effervescence, which he did beautifully. And that interview is just fantastic. He tells you about Dear Bulbula, he tells you about art, he tells you about his political family, all his interests. And it's just fantastically done with, uh, I think the adjective that so well describes him and was created for him, ebullience. You know, he was just ebullient in a way that uh, I don't think anyone else in Sri Lanka had been. Nina is ebullient in a different way. Uh, Jeffrey, who was marvelous, was not ebullient. He was just wonderfully grand and a presence. But Lucky just bubbled. Uh, I will end with the poem that Ina, uh, Lucky produced for Ina's book. I have actually produced it in the latest book I produced about Ina, Exploring with Ina, because it captures both her and her great friend. Ina, have you seen her? Yeah. Well, as she waved higher on Pasong, Vallavaya, uh, packed to the gills with what she calls no frills meals, just toast under caviar and a few balls of condiment, overall a tent, I guess she was bent on the scent of an elephant. Ina? This may seem absurd, but last heard, she was gifting Christmas crackers to the Yala trackers, consisting of embroidered caps with cunningly braided chin straps. And now the poor chaps, quite spellbound, both ears and knees to the ground, have acclaimed her the ruling deity of the Vana Nivahana. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you'll enjoy the video of Lucky. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Two people I love very much. Thank you so much, Rajiva. Um, we now will open up for tributes from the audience. Uh, I kindly request that you keep it to between three to five minutes uh, so that others get an opportunity to speak as well. Would you like me to speak? Can you hear me? Yes, it is, Matt. Go ahead. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Well, uh, what can I say about Lucky? I mean, I've known him for most of my life and I've, uh, he was my teacher. He was my uh, friend, he was a mentor and we worked collaborated in a huge number of uh, ideas and projects. And wherever, uh, whenever I ran into a, a problem with my artwork, I would always go to him for advice. He taught me how to work in different materials like aluminum and gold leaf and above all, he introduced me to four personalities who really changed my life. Ina at first, and then to Barbara Sanzoni, Jeffrey Bava, and Ulrich Perez. And that paid rich dividends. And we did several projects together, but uh, what I found in Lucky was he was quite uh, open to ideas. And I remember when he wanted to do the series of designs for the currency notes for the central bank, I had my whole library open to him. And he used all these lovely 19th century natural history illustrations from books, from legs, birds, 
Freeman's flora, Bennett's fishes, all done before 1900, beautiful lithographic prints. But Lucky gave it an incredible twist to all of those and you know, assembled them all together and got all those notes beautifully done. And uh, while we were working on it, our daughter Dinazad now holds a PhD from Cambridge, but at that time, she was just three or four years old and she used to mix up all the paintings, the colors, which Lucky used to take a long time in trying to get a certain color of ochre or pink. And uh, when I used to sort of feel very nervous, Lucky used to come and tell me, okay, that's, that's how uh, children should grow up, knowing colors. That's okay, leave it aside and let me do it again. And, but above all, I think what was amazing was that Lucky had a fantastic sense of humor and he could disguise himself and come to a place which everyone knew him, who he was when he just came in as a person. But when in disguise, they absolutely got completely, you know, uh, unrecognizable. And uh, once he came into Edward's Eden Beg as a Tamil draftsman from Jaffna, deaf and dumb, he uh, sent out a note asking for, uh, for subscriptions for a strike that was going on in which he said that Balawat spinning and weaving mills and he took the all this money from all his friends and he walked away and he came back about 20 minutes later with a whole box of chocolate eclairs, cakes and so on. And he munched it himself. <laughs> Everyone was looking at him, wondering, this guy eating all alone. Then he held this box of cakes to the rest of the drafting room and said, this is your money. <laughs> And then he completely dissembled his, his uh, disguise. He has fooled Ina, he has fooled Ina's, uh, you know, sister Phyllis and so many people. And, uh, but I, I think one of, the, one of the incredible things was that he was a very good teacher, very good teacher of art and uh, he could easily spot, you know, uh, if you did a drawing or a sketch or you were doing a sculpture. I used to do, I learned all my batik, uh, you know, printing from him and he would advise me on color. And but some of those things which would seem very simple were really intricate and he somehow had worked it all out and he, he, he was, uh, he had a very fine way of dismembering things and putting them all together. And he was a man for all seasons because he would one day go out and you know do a series of incredible dives on a springboard and win the you know championship for the schools. Then he would just get onto his powerful motorbike and go on a rally and become the first person on a 600 mile journey. I mean, he, he had different facets and he, he, he would, you know, he enjoyed uh, our company. I mean, our family knew him for ages and we used to all go out to the National Park together. And uh, what held us also together was the wildlife and birds and trees and identifying trees and so on. And he was a very good companion. So I've written a piece in the Times about my 55 years collaboration with him on various things and what I learned from him. So anyone who's keen on finding out more about Lucky and my, uh, you know, collaboration and my you know, inheritance from him can refer to that. Thank you very much. This is Ismat Rahim. Thanks, Channa and everyone there. <laughs> Baba Trust. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Ismet.
Thank you, Isma. Um, would Noel Dias like to say a few words now? Obasamata Sirdanatama, I bow on Mama Lucky in a Danakote, Kadas Namasi, Hatta Diki, but then up a Hamula Gakal, dear Bugulaki and Istani, Vadakerla, Tankerla, Nikdalkerla, a Sam Dame out to Labisala Kalaki, Mama Dana Lucky Kiani and Nika. Mean lucky kin put in a bohom bohom near the money, bohom a gambit of bohom a minisunta without kerna put the lip, passing madana cal asaker cale tula. Put out Tanata when we got a calapi. Iwa game a canal water, good out the well at Pacal Ladilatino, ma, some of Isala had a cotasak Udiana Lankar Vede Evan Nirmani Mahitani Lucky Sinaka Kien a good deal. Sorry, Noel, you're on mute. Hello? All right. Okay. Thing, Mangi, a Gita Kale Tulama, Mama Lucky Sinaga Kina Pudilla, a Suka Latino, Bohoman, Bohoman, Ariadre in Balatino, Ariadre in Arsaka Latino, Sierra de Catam Mama, Etumagi, Udaupadoka Latino. Eva game. Antima Kali Dakwa, Antima Kali, I am Masia. A Mata Minim Mankapaka Latino, A Mata Karanapulam, Pati Upakar Magia Timankala di Latino, with him Mata me Vishal Adua Natune. My Tanya Magi GT Magi Ekatak Neva, what him Kino, it a permanent matter. Egan nati padu denno. Idiri edi mahitan ni lucky si na naay kwe ni kudilyam merate bihin ni bihin noy kira bihin na. Ewa ge gatibon na ewa ge kalalo ge na dan na ewa ge nirahan ka na kudilyo bohum adui ni lopi. E Dakis and Naka Kien, a Mahatata, Ma Antimakali Dakwa, Matakaran Pulan, Sam the Amaka Latino, Idiliata, Imamata, Yankees, you had a good Satinona Yagdua, Mintaka, Samaki, a Sail the Amma, Matakia Karadina, Ma Bala Portino Dakis and Naka Mahatata. Once a Thank you. Um, I believe Ashley DeVos wants to say a few words now. Ashley? Hello, Ashley? Hear me. 
Um, maybe we'll move on to Mintaka until Ashley is with us. Really? Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, I, I am almost speechless to see so many people here that I know and don't know. But before I get into that, let me introduce two people to you. Um, this is my son, Brandon. Hi. And this is my husband, Brandon. So this is little B and big B. That is how I call them. And so just to let, let all of you know, for those of you who don't know me, um, I am Lucky's daughter, Mintaka. Um, I, uh, you know, this is a, a joy and a sadness all together. Um, you know, so many of you have talked about Lucky um, as an artist, as a friend, um, I have the privilege of calling him Tapi, right? And truly, <laughs> it has been a, a 54 year privilege. Um, and, um, and please uh, forgive me if I, if I am a little emotional, um, but uh, I just, the, all these days I've been thinking about everything that uh, Tapi has meant to me. And I think, the biggest thing is the connections that he has created. And I think Uncle Jomo wrote about it in his article about the silver thread that Tati connected each and every one of us. Those of you who I have never met, but have heard through stories, through adventures that he had, because, and some of you have spent more time physically in Sri Lanka and in his presence than I have. So for me, each and every hundred people that are on this Zoom call is a little portion of the fabric that my father has woven in his lifetime. And I am hoping that you will be that cloak that will keep me going and remembering my father uh, through the rest of my life and everything that he has taught me about the kind of person to be. You know, um, I think I heard so many people say, it didn't matter who you were, where you came from, what you did. You know, Tati bubbled in the Abubla and made you feel welcome. And that's the, the essence of my father that will always live with me. And, Hopefully I will pass on to this young man next to me um, into the future so that we can always have that connection. Uh, it is, you know, Tati, Tati did a lot of stuff. He was an inventor. He and Diamama got into all manner of experiments um, <laughs> that I couldn't even begin to understand some of the drawings that he has sent me. Uh, but it was such excitement and enthusiasm that was infectious and, and kept me always waiting um, at whether I was here in Orlando or whether I used to live in Dehiwala. Uh, I used to wait to hear his whistle. Um, so Clara, I, I need that, that clip that you have of my father whistling. Um, I, I mean, that is his essence. I, I learned to whistle from him and I, Anybody who whistles, I'm in love with, because that reminds me of my father. So thank you for capturing those moments. Um, so many of you, Channa, uh, Lahiru, Uncle Ismat, um, you know, and Tati connected me to a person uh, who has meant so much to me is Atama. So I, I mean, Auntie Barbara, Dominic, who is not here, and I, I know he sent me a message. All the people, I, I can go on for another hour. I know Shanika Mosrabi is having a conniption at the moment uh, when I say that, but there's so much that all of you have done. And, and, and to me, that is just, um, uh, that is what my father will always mean to me. It is really hard to know that I'm here and I didn't get to see him, uh, but, you know, such is life. And Tati would tell me, darling, don't be silly, um, you know, and um, 
life is uh, the other word he loved to use was everything was brilliant he had a brilliant idea or he met a brilliant person or he heard a brilliant piece of music and i wanted to see um i wanted to share with you the first piece of music that i ever remember my father from the time i was i think maybe four that he played for me so i'm going to share that if you don't mind just a, and you will recognize it the moment you hear it So that was a portion of the wall. Um, I was four when I first heard that um, uh, first heard that uh, song, and it the part that uh, really uh, got to me is when it says, "Hey you." you know, and, and it talks about, are you out there and let me into your heart, right? So I have heard from each and every one of you that he told you, let me into your heart. And that's what you have done here today. So I just want to thank you very, very much for that. Um, and then I want you to hear his voice again. I know everyone has played it, but um, another very, poignant memory that I have of my father is when I was a little girl, he used to uh, recite a poem, Winnie the Pooh and Christopher Robin. So several years ago, I wanted my son to hear it. Um, and I asked him to make a recording of it and send it to me. So here is Winnie the Tati reciting the Christopher Robin poem. I hope it works and they can hear it. I'm not sure they can hear it. Can you guys hear it? Uh, Mintika, we can't hear that. Uh, I okay. Can you share the sound or you can play through um, your phone. Your phone. Okay, hold on. Let me play through my phone. Wherever I am, there's always poo. There's always poo in me. Whatever I do, he wants to do. Where are you going today, says poo? Well, that's very odd. Because I was too. Let's go together, says Pooh, says he. Let's go together, says Pooh. So wherever I am, there's always Pooh. There's always Pooh and me. What's twice eleven? I said to Pooh. Twice what, said Pooh to me? I think it ought to be twenty-two. Just what I thought myself, said Pooh. It wasn't an easy sum to do, but that's what it is, said Pooh, says he. That's what it is, says Pooh. Let's look for dragons, I said to Pooh. Yes, let's, said Pooh to me. He crossed the river and found a few. Yes, those are dragons, all right, said Pooh. As soon as I saw their beaks, I knew. That's what they are, said Pooh, said he. That's what they are, said Pooh. So wherever I am, there's always poo, there's always poo and me. Let's frighten the dragons, I said to poo. That's right, said poo to me. I'm not afraid, I said to poo. And I held his paw and I shouted, shoo, silly old dragons, and off they flew. 
I was afraid said pools I did. I'm never afraid with you. So wherever I am, I always do. What would I do? I said to poo if it wasn't for you. And poo said, true. Oh, that's it. What happened? That was the end. Twice what said poo to me? I think it ought to be 22. Just what I thought myself. Well, said that's poo. I think it because I... Anyway, everybody, you know, Tati, Tati made me feel like he was my poo, right? And I was his. We were always together and we had so many adventures. Uh, it included Uncle Nanda, Uncle Ismat. Uh, we've been chased by elephants, uh, all those things, right? We've had uh, various adventures where Tati peed on the leg of an elephant in Yala. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 craziest stories and for those of you um, somebody wrote in one of the articles that one of the times that he ever stood naked uh, or both of the times that he ever stood naked in public um, was in Heathrow airport and in a bus and unfortunately I was the catalyst for both of those events <laughs> the first one I pulled down his sarong in the bus and then ra rushed out screaming uh, because I was embarrassed and left him standing with his bag on top of his head and no way to pull up his sarong <laughs> so you know um, and, and so he always delighted in telling people this story because it embarrassed me so much that I, I didn't even hang around to help him lift up his sarong so you know uh, that that was my father and uh, I and those are the crazy crazy stories we have so many um, that I could spend hours recounting and uh, so again Thank you very much, everybody, for this time. Channa for coming up with this idea. For Shanika and everyone else who has, um, you know, worked to communicate it out and get so many people on this uh, Zoom call. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for this lovely day. Um, it will always be in my memory. Thank you. Hello. Hi, okay. Ashley, go ahead. Okay. Ashley, we can see and hear you. Please okay. continue. Hi. Hi, everybody. In fact, I'm not sure whether you can remember me, but you were very small when I first met you. I first met uh, Lucky in 1964. Uh, and I think at that time he had a. Sorry. One second. We, we... Hello? Can you hear me? Actually, we can hear you. Yes, you're good. Great. Uh, actually, I met Lucky. I had the privilege of meeting Lucky in 1964. I think he had a small Bantam uh, BSA motorcycle at that time. And he used to be floating around Colombo uh, on that bike. But I just want to extend the story that, Lucky, that Ismet started actually about Lucky. Uh, he always wanted to pull pranks on everybody. And I remember once he came to RNB uh, with Ulrich. Ulrich also was a prankster. And they came in there and uh, basically Lucky was, Ulrich gave us the story that he picked, picked up this guy who was from India on the road and Lucky had a torn coat and he had blood, blood splotches all over his face. The face was all swollen and so on. And he came and sat in front of us. And we were so embarrassed because nobody wanted to look at him because we didn't want to embarrass him. You know? So we all kept looking at, looking around, and, but talking to each other and saying, hey, who is this guy? Where did he come? You know? Did somebody beat him up? And so on. And it went on for about half an hour. And then Ulrich said, look, I think he must be tired. I'll take him home. 
and get him washed up. And Ulrik took him away. And we still kept asking ourselves, who is this guy? You know, what, from where did he come? And then finally, uh, Lucky came back, back to the office and said, uh, pulled out some cotton wool from his mouth and said, yeah, these are very disturbing, you know. And, and then we all realized it was Lucky. So Lucky was fantastic, actually. He was the ultimate uh, sort of uh, person. He, he made a great career in films, you know, a James Cagney type guy who could uh, sort of disguise himself in various ways and so on, which was fantastic. And I can still remember, still sort of hear that flute floating around, you know. And uh, he was such a such a graceful guy, you know, very graceful in everything he did. And uh, you know, he he was very simple. And the, I met him the last time about two years ago at the Abuula, and we had a long chat actually, reminiscing some of the old times and so on. And uh, basically what I would like to just leave with you is that the humility of this man, you know, he was a special spirit that floated around, went through all of our lives and left lasting memories, which is to me uh, fantastic because I would always want to remember him as that sound of the flute that floats around, you know. So I, I make this very short. Thank you very much, uh, Channa and the uh, Bhava Trust for giving me this opportunity of speaking a few words about this very special, special human being, you know, very special. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, we have time for one more um, tribute, uh, Kavan Ratnatunga. Please go ahead. Hi, I just wanted to tell a few words uh, about Lucky's currency. And uh, I'm just, I'll show this book which has Lucky's currency notes, which was published by International Book on all the world's currency, but they put Lucky's uh, currency on the top page. And that's very special, I think, uh, recognition of the fact that he printed one of the most beautiful and most valuable set of currency notes of Sri Lanka and maybe the world. Uh, this currency note has another speciality. I, I wish I had made a proper PowerPoint. Is that I didn't know this, even though I was a big collector, that there was uh, Orion put in there because of Mintaka being the middle star in the Orion's belt. And being an astronomer, that was extremely special to me. And when I met him in November 2019 with uh, my wife, Lidwina, it was a really enjoyable time. And I, I'm sad to say that uh, we didn't manage to complete the book we were going to publish on Lucky's notes before he passed away from us. But I hope that it will be Lidwina sends a special because she can remember Mintaka and Lucky both in the Hivala uh, when she was small. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Karan. Um, we will now close the event with a short film by photographer and documentary filmmaker, Ryan Daniels. I don't know whether you follow happiness. I mean, that's a state you're in. You can't really make it happen. Yeah, I can see it quite clearly from here with my naked eye. Uh, I can see all the beautiful patterns. Ah, that's good. You can start your video with a shot of the owl. <laughs> now, Noel, we have to start 
gold leafing that sculpture. The owl. When I was maybe four or five, we lived in this remote uh, uh, coconut plantation, and there was a fair wilderness around. No? And in the night, I could hear these owls of all sorts, including this forest eagle owl that screams its head off like someone being strangled. So I used to be fearful, even to the extent that I had a book of nursery rhymes, and in it there was "Who killed Cock Robin," and in it there is an owl. So my el my sisters and my elder brothers, to make me feel frightened, used to take it and start reading it in the night. <laughs> because I was so fearful of it, you know. And I remember once, we had a toilet maybe about 50 yards outside of the house, right? Uh, and now I wanted to go and do a crap, but in my dreams, I, I, there was a huge owl inside. So my mother says, why aren't you going for a crap? So I, I, you know, I didn't want to say, so I eventually said, I think there's an owl inside. <laughs> It starts from being fearful. <laughs> but then later, I think one of the watchers in on the estate, they had guns those days. And uh, he had shot an owl. So I saw this poor dead thing. Not at all. I, I, it still looked lovely. But that's how, then I started drawing them. <laughs> Jeffrey Bauer has some which I made in lead. They were cast in lead. At that time, I didn't realize that lead was deadly poison, but you know, melting lead. And then there's a vapor coming out of it. And only later I read that, you know, you might have terrible brain damage. <laughs> I mean, the, so then I stopped. But I actually did five foot high tall sculptures for Jeffrey in lead before I knew that this was a bad thing to do. So maybe my brain has been addled. <laughs> it's an interesting story that, now in my family, uh, my, because I was a sort of middle guy, my elder brothers and sisters, they, they, I was the butt of all their jokes, you know, like the black sheep of the family. And I used to have malaria, very high fever and almost died we are living in this remote place. So one day I heard my mother telling my elder brothers, don't joke and fool around with Lucky because his brain has been addled with malaria. <laughs> As a result of that, I mean, they put up with a lot of nonsense from me. <laughs> addled with malaria. I have whistled that bird, and he came and settled on the top of that cock's comb there. Oh. They get annoyed when you whistle. It's like, you know, it's invasion in their territory. Otherwise, he's usually lurking in the bush, but if you whistle back to him, he comes right out. And <laughs> so that, in, in a way, I have been using this notion of doing a sculpture and getting nature to do the rest of it, like this... Uh, double coconut here, there are two pipes that come up and it dribbles water, around. it is just made out of ferro-cement concrete but the two pipes let water very slowly down it so the moss grows on it when you let it go loose on what people have done uh, and when you look at the ancient things like Machu Picchu and all Things like Angkor Wat, and, you know, I mean, the very fact that there was nature growing over human constructions, it looked much better. Especially the ficus trees. Uh, even in Colombia, I have seen them growing over the top of one of these fancy old gate posts, but wrapping the roots down and growing on top of it is really it's a superb sculpture. Now even this tree is it's done so that eventually leaves will fall into it and soon I'm hoping like spiders will come and start building webs on it. 
that's another lovely idea for a sculpture if you go down the road and you see these telegraph poles with wires going down and every now and then you come across a whole lot of one range of it completely webbed with spider webs so you do this on a huge like you have a large acre of water like this with stainless steel going rods going up and this mesh all around it and you know when when you get the dew drops on a spider web that's beautiful sight already you know so that's the idea you get that so i'm hoping it will happen <laughs> i if i had a lot of money i would have done it by now <laughs> in the night my reason for lighting the trees when the water is like this dark it acts like a mirror in fact there are black mirrors okay so when you light it up the whole space becomes doubled so instead of just seeing this you see another complete wonderful space in fact in many of my landscape designs i have used mirrors even in very small areas so that that extends the view uh i mean I, even from a long time i used to be fascinated with the mirrors the fact is that most of the time you are you don't really uh, are aware of the mirror but you are looking at the reflection hmm? lucky lucky no what's happening lucky hello yes max my god but let me tell you some interesting news uh there's a young photographer from texas who's here doing a major video uh of me and the garden when does this exhibition start 21st okay so we have 20 days or something the exhibition uh lucky was referring to in that video was the greedy forest curated by max moya that um the jeffy baba trust held for the second time um in late 2019 at ina de silva's house in lunoganga it was first shown at the barefoot gallery the year before um so i think it's time for us to wrap up um we thank you all so much for joining and sharing such lovely tributes with us uh for those who couldn't join us live we will be uploading the recording to uh the jeffy baba trust youtube channel so do look out for that uh we hope you all stay safe and well during these uncertain times and we wish you all a pleasant evening chana would you like to say anything before we close well thank you everybody and thank you especially mintaka for sharing so much about lucky and yourself and i hope uh, all of us who uh, missed um, being part of a, a, a private a, a, a private tribute to lucky uh, would uh, indeed uh, have benefited from being together this evening uh to to remember an extraordinary personality so thank you every very thank you very much everybody on behalf of the jeffrey bava trust uh and um wish you all a pleasant evening thank you very much hey is that lucky's art behind you yes <laughs> very nice beautiful very nice lucky painting that's behind you. everybody okay. thank you so much again chana i cannot uh, you know express how grateful i am for this time um to spend with so many loved ones and i really really appreciate it um and i hope that whenever i get to come back to sri lanka that i will have a chance to thank each and every one of you personally for your contributions today and for being my father's uh, very well loved friends so thank you again